Hi there. Yes, I've been very lucky. I've been travelling the world for about 22 years now, making wildlife films for the BBC. And, um, you know, I'm very fortunate to have had some truly extraordinary experiences. I've camped in the lowest and hottest place on Earth in a live volcano, and I filmed the moment of sunrise at, on Everest at summit level from a British spy plane. But one of the things that I've learnt is that if you truly want to experience wilderness, you have to venture very far from the comforts of civilization. And that's certainly something I've been doing for the past eight years as I directed the programs on mountains and ice worlds for planet Earth and then went on to series produce Frozen Planet. Of course, it goes without saying that one of the biggest challenges of working in the polar regions is the cold. And people ask me, what does that feel like? Well, if you throw a cup of boiling water in the air at minus 40, it freezes solid before it even hits the ground. So even the most basic human functions are a major operation. Going for a pee, and I think I can say poop now, given the start of the <laughs> conversation, is something you do rather speedily and very rarely, and particularly when you've got a hungry polar bear over your shoulder, as I did on one particular occasion. So what are my top tips for polar survival? Well, looking at this shot, probably I need to shave more often. <laughs> but, uh, you know, getting the dress code right is a matter of life and death. Polar animals have a distinct advantage. <coughs> Clearly, they've got a lot of inbuilt insulation. But we lack fur and feathers. So I will wear a total of 10 layers at all times. And I mean in the field, on the plane, in the helicopter, because you never know when your plane is going to be forced down, as mine was at the North Pole, with very little notice, and your survival time on the ice at that point is less than an hour, unless you have the right gear. So we didn't risk any training on the job for Frozen Planet, and I decided to be a complete bitch, as some of my team call me, and take them all to the middle of the Norwegian Arctic in the middle of winter. And it was minus 30, frequent blizzards, and 24-hour darkness. And what we did over the next couple of weeks was we literally put them through simulated avalanche and crevasse rescue. We did advanced driving at night. And we also did, um, we were trained how to handle rifles in case of a polar bear attack. Now, most of us weren't particularly, <laughs> well, this guy was, but I wasn't very comfortable as a marksman. So it's a relief to say that the only time we ever saw a charging bear was when they were pictured on these targets that you can see on the driving range. Um, now, clearly, we also had to put all our kit through its paces. And we did that in an industrial freezer just close to Bristol. And it was quite a bizarre sight to see all this high-tech gear surrounded by boxes of frozen baguettes, burgers, and chips. But I can tell you, working out what wasn't going to work in the cold was much more important to do in England than to suddenly discover it didn't work when you were, for example, diving under Antarctic ice. Now, my next great tip is make sure that you're surrounded by people that know more than you do. And in the Arctic, that involves going to the indigenous people, many of whom still work on the land and sea, as they have done for generations. Their knowledge of the ice and the wildlife is second to none. But I have to say, I have slightly less respect for their culinary traditions. I was forced to eat walrus intestine that had been buried underground for six months until it was thoroughly fermented and had the taste and texture of the ripest blue cheese that I've ever tasted. Not a dish I'd recommend. Now, Antarctica is completely different. It's so remote and inhospitable that it has no indigenous population. So here, just getting there, you have to rely on some extraordinary resources. We were very lucky to have a Royal Naval icebreaker on hand for us to cross the roughest sea on Earth. Once we were there, we were in the hands of America, thank goodness, um, with the National Science Foundation. And it was just as well, because Antarctica is the coldest, driest, windiest, and highest continent on Earth. And I was to experience the power of these elements at first hand when I took this shot. As you can see, this is winds. These are actually hurricane force winds, the fastest on Earth, pouring off the ice cap. They lifted up our helicopter and tossed it around as if we were in a tumble dryer. My normally stoic British pilot at this point announced that he doesn't know what the was in charge of the helicopter, but it certainly wasn't him. Uh, <laughs> I was very relieved to be working with such an experienced pilot at that particular moment. 
So my great goal was to try and retrace the route of the great explorers like Scott and Shackleton and film the amazing journeys that they made. They had to tackle this, the Transantarctic Mountains, a range that probably few of you know, but actually rivals the Himalayas in scale. And for me, the most moving moment on this entire series was when the Beardmore Glacier opened up in front of me. This glacier is 100 miles long and riven with crevasses so deep they could have swallowed our entire plane. At that moment, I looked down and was moved to tears to think that those men crossed this on foot. And it's amazing to think that it's only 100 years since Scott and Amundsen were the first humans to stand at the South Pole, and they did it without any of the aid of all the technology and the training that my team benefited from. So I think I'd like to just finish with the idea that I think we need to look to these, this group of, in those days, men and now women, and realize that they absolutely have set the stage for all the exploration and the science and the kind of filming that I do at the extremes of our planet. And I think they also taught us one lesson, that it is perhaps the power of the human spirit that is ultimately the best survival aid of all. Thank you very much. <laughs>